Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores has been out for a few days now, and since my favourite content to cover in any game is its secrets, I thought we'd do that today. As far as I'm aware, there aren't many in Burning Shores, but that's kind of what I expected from a DLC. That being said, I've happened upon five that I believe to be worthy of content. Well, one's kind of throwaway, but it's still helpful. So, my definition of a secret ranges from easter eggs to things that provide extra information, or even just areas that are helpful, but nothing ever indicates that they exist. That's my definition when it comes to games, anyway. In real life, I'm a little bit more strict on what I clarify to be a secret, but when it comes to games, anything that the game doesn't necessarily tell you is there, is fair game, provided it's either useful or interesting, of course. So without further rambling, please enjoy Five Secrets in Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores. First and foremost, whilst playing Horizon, have you ever looked at your bow and gone, hang on a minute, this is a bit rubbish, I need something better? If the answer to that question is yes, the Burning Shores has the perfect weapon for you. There is a building located here on the map just southeast of Fleet's End that you'll notice you can scale. Be mindful, the area surrounding this building is swarming with some rather hefty machines. Yeah, suffice it to say, we're not going down the way we came up. <laughs> However, upon reaching the top, we find ourselves in the ruins of an old apartment. And there's a data pad on the counter that reads as follows. Dear whoever finds this note, I would like you to know this note is to tell you that my house is fully open to you, and I would like you to know that all the cupboards are full of food. You are also free to use any of the things I have at home. Just please don't go into my room. I didn't have a chance to clean it. Yours sincerely, Layla. I don't think the food is going to survive a thousand years somehow, however there are some bits around this house that are quite useful. In a cache that we'll have to pry open, we can find a unique bow. The Toy Bow. The Toy Bow functions as the objective best weapon in the game. It fires plungers and does next to no damage whatsoever. If you wish for a weapon that has almost 100% chance of getting you killed, this is the bow to go for. And yes, the toy arrows do indeed stick to surfaces. Obviously, this bow is an easter egg, as it's identical to a toy bow that Abby uses in a minigame in The Last of Us Part 2. It's not 100% identical, but you get the point, it's clearly a reference. But it's entertaining that you can equip and use the bow, and even craft arrows for it. Our second secret brings us to this island to the west of Fleet's End, and at the very far west of the map. This island is in a constant state of storm, so you might get struck by lightning. But that's because of a storm bird high in the clouds. You may want to fight that before continuing with this secret, however, this isn't necessarily related to it, as I certainly did this after the fact. But arguably this way around makes things far easier. Anyway, towards the west of the island, you may come across a chest that cannot open, and these pans on the wall. In order to unlock the chest, you must shoot the pans in a specific order. Now the chest will be unlocked and we can collect some rare bits. Aloy's comment alludes to the fact that in order to unlock the chest, you've just played Aloy's theme from the Horizon soundtrack. If you didn't hear it the first time, you almost certainly will the second. Just to clarify, you absolutely do not have to use the toy bow in order to do this. I've seen some people saying online that you need to, when in reality you can just do it with any bow, it's just more fun to see the arrows stick. So probably do use the toy bow because you'll find it too fun to not. And also the arrows are really easy to make so you'd feel like you're not wasting resources as well. So double victory for us. 
For secret number three, Brimshine is a brand new material found only in the Burning Shores. It's incredibly valuable to merchants and can be used to purchase special items, such as outfits and weapons. But it's not actually as uncommon as it first seems. Provided you know where to look, you can find plenty of the stuff just laying around. And one such location is Fleet's End itself. If you head to this spot around the back of Fleet's End, you should easily happen upon a building that you can climb. You'll arrive on a floor with a door that's locked and requires a key module. The key module itself can be found around this spot here on the map, just north. From the centre of town you can climb up these two little perches, and then off you can find some abandoned ruins that you can further climb. It shouldn't be too hard to locate the vent that you can crack open, and then inside you will find the key module. And of course, with that inserted, the doors will fling open, granting us access to the hidden room. You'll find some decent loot inside alongside three units of Brimshine. There's also this little passageway that shouldn't be too hard to find within Fleet's End. If you head inside, there is a bit of wall that you can rip out. Behind this, you will find even more Brimshine. And suddenly, with minimal effort, you are swimming in the stuff. It's certainly useful when it comes to navigating the Burning Shores merchants, but this was my throwaway to bring the number up to five. For our fourth secret, thanks to the DLC, we're familiar with a Quen compliance guy, whatever that means, named Rang. Rang is shown to be a character who distrusts and has disdain for just about everything. Keeping his eyes open for any sign of treason, He's known to take it a bit far, and does so in one of the side missions in the DLC. However, unrelated to anything, did you know that you can find his journal in Fleet's End? It's located atop a short, ruined tower on the western side of the camp. It's made apparent by these ladders that there's something up here waiting to be found. So, a short climb later, and we're met with a desk and a chair and on the desk is something that we can scan. This note is titled Confidential Property of Reng. It's a worn, water-stained journal lined with glyphs. It reads as follows. Confidential Property of Officer Reng, pursuant to Confidentiality Clause 919.3D, as set forth by the Board of Compliance, any persons caught viewing, tampering with, or in possession of a compliance officer's property shall face immediate legal persecution. Final warning. Notes for compliance final record. Vi and Enki, diviners. Loss of overseer Boai, troubling. Risk of breakdown of social propriety without proper supervision. Enki reportedly fraternizing with several sailors. Need names. Update. Enki presumed dead on scouting mission. Vi killed on search and rescue mission for lost crew. Upon return, ensure Board of Overseers views Admiral Gerrit as liable for their deaths, not compliance. Borge Supervisor Unauthorised distilling of Bilge Blaze reported by fellow supervisor. Confiscated Bilge Blaze may leave name off final report provided supply keeps flowing. Malva Cook Served me a crab leg instead of a claw. Unacceptable. Dinner was all kelp, no crab. An intentional slight against an officer of compliance. Sand grit in my porridge. Find a charge that will stick. Do not forget. Saker, Marine. Disproportionate level of contribution to settlement versus rank since shipwreck. Has gained trust of Admiral. One to watch. Results driven short term benefit but signals disrespect for rules and processes. Theft of a diviner's focus. Capital crime. Colluding with a red-headed barbarian, add to the charges. Admiral Gerrit has allowed crimes to go unpunished. Possible treason charges? So not only is Reng just a little bit of a tosser, he's also an absolutely undeniably power-mad Karen. And this journal confirms what our limited interactions with Reng lead us to suspect. He has it out for absolutely everybody. I like when the environment provides depth to characters, so I knew I had to mention this one when I stumbled across it. Our fifth and final secret of the day requires us to acquire every single Delver's trinket in the Burning Shores, with there being seven in total located at various different locations around the Burning Shores. 
They're not too hard to find with those map markers, though you may want to look up a more in-depth guide. Because if I went into depth on all of them, we would be here, frankly, for years. The trinkets usually lead you into minor navigational puzzles in order to acquire them, and provided the going looks thick and painful, you are probably in the right place. Each of these trinkets has a clue that leads to an Osaram Delver's Cruise treasure. This doesn't come up as a side quest or anything, you just find them whilst out and about in the world, and once all seven are in your possession, you receive the errand quest, The Delver's Trove. Die, bird! The quest leads you to this large area in the southeast of the Burning Shores, where we will need to locate the Osaram Delver's camp, and then from there follow the hints inscripted onto the trinkets in the order they are sorted in in the menu to locate where in this large area the treasure actually is. I'll save you the effort, it's here. With that in mind all you have to do is remember that X marks the spot and then find that in the beach and buried in the sand sure enough. Would you look at that, it's the Delvers Trove. Now all that's left is to pry open this buried cachet, and within we can find 15 brimshine and other valuables along with it, along with a trophy. It's an interesting little secret errand that you'll only know about if you collected the Delvers trinkets, so that's pretty neat. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of today's five secrets. So, thank you all for watching, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and have learned about something new and interesting in the Burning Shores DLC. I did look for more traditional sort of easter eggs and things like that at first. There were a couple that I found, but I couldn't verify if they were indeed referencing something, as they were very vague and not as on the nose as you'd come to expect an easter egg to be. Anyway, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share this channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff, of course, if you enjoyed this video. And maybe, if you like history, check out our History Channel Decades. I mean, if you don't like me, I wouldn't advise it. If you don't like history, you absolutely don't have to. There are no obligations to any of this outro admin. Most people have probably clicked off the video already. So, if you've made it this far into the video, let me know how many pet rocks you've collected over the course of your Horizon Forbidden West playthrough. I have 348. Whoever has the highest number gets lens flared to oblivion. With any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, please take care and goodbye.